morning everybody it's kind of a new perspective here because I finally got on a replacement from my old cell phone holder in the car it's now not fixed on the windshield but on the console but it's kind of a small magnetic one but the magnetic part is really really nice so yeah you don't see as much of my surroundings anymore but I think you should concentrate anyway on the content now. Uh, I know there have been a few people watching that wanted to see where I am and watched equally what I was talking about and what was in the surroundings. And yeah, uh, there has been a topic in, the, in my head for quite a while and I didn't know where to fit it in and I thought maybe let's do this on this trial video. Um, it's early in the morning anyway. Yeah, there was Champions League yesterday, but I want to talk more about Champions League uh, tomorrow when we know all the qualifiers and maybe then even the draw for the group stage. Um, and before I get into this topic also, uh, yeah, the Nations League is coming, which kind of motivated this talk. So I'll probably look at a few of my shirts from the uh, national teams that I have and, and you will be surprised. Uh, I guess that almost as group shirts, there are certain nations that I have more. I mean, one you know, France, I have quite a lot. Um, Italy, I also have half a lot. And yeah, the Netherlands would be the other one. Although I don't have that many Dutch jerseys, uh, which is a little, a little bit odd since I always consider the Dutch on par almost with Italy. I, at the moment, I would still give Italy the nod, the nod of being my favorite favorite. But yeah, that's uh, for the future. I will also make a video on what I think about the Nations League in general, but uh, once we edge closer to that. But yeah, um, since we're already on topic, Nations League is means national teams. And after the World Cup, the biggest news on national team level that did not involve players retiring was the new FIFA uh, ranking, rating, um, however you want to call it. Uh, I make a difference between ranking and rating. I am a statistician after all. Uh, um, ranking is just giving you uh, first, second, third and da, 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 without any qualitative uh, information about what's the difference between those. The rating does this. So the FIFA ranking is based on the rating and this rating was uh, for a long time computed with a formula that just tried too much uh, was modified. I think it came out at the latest installment in 2006 and was once revised. Um, it basically you earned points uh, based on who you were playing, that is okay, but since um, they recognized the teams are playing an equal amount of games, so they took the eight best games, averaged over those, uh, so you always had to keep track of that. And then in addition, um, the biggest sticky point for me was the that the continental federations had different weights. So uh, Europe and South America always had the highest weight. And if you played a friendly against any other federation, you automatically would not make as many points. Um, also, as it turned out, very, um, in the last few years, playing friendlies hurts your rating. And Austria was a prime example that in 2015, uh, Austria played Brazil at the end of the uh, 2014. Austria played Brazil at the end of the year, uh, which meant if they would have won it, yes, this would have been uh, great for them. They, of course, did it for money, theory, whatever. I mean, it was really uh, icing on top of a cake uh, after a great um, season of internationals. But as it turned out, because we lost to Brazil, the, although there was a, 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 we were, I was at that game, we were not the worst team. It was kind of a little bit fluky uh, win for Brazil. I think a draw would have been a deserved result, which still wouldn't have changed the outcome of it. We would have had to win against Brazil. That in when the FIFA qualifying groups were drawn, Austria was in pot two and not pot one. Um, 
at the cost of whales being in pot one. Now, as fate would have had it, the whales was in our group, so in the end it didn't really matter, but uh, it could have mattered if we would have uh, drawn in a group, let's say with Germany, uh, Spain or whatever, or whoever. And also it turned out that a few nations um, hired consultants on the FIFA uh, rating ranking, the old one, to figure out how can I maximize it. This is something smart. Uh, of course, the big nations don't do that uh, because they think, yeah, we should be a pot one anyway. No, you're not. So Poland, for instance, figured that if we don't play any friendlies, uh, we rise in the ranking. And that's exactly what happened. Poland was in first spot, in the first pot at the World Cup draw. Uh, and everyone said Poland is not a first pot team, yeah, but they were there because they were smart enough to realize that uh, you can manipulate those um, ratings enough in order to make it uh, up the standings. So yeah, the new one of course took care of this and the first thought was, yeah, they take now, instead of this point system, they take the ELO rating, which uh, an ELO system, it is not the ELO rating that they had in the final. That was kind of the first thing where I thought, oh, 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 let's see what it does. Now, going for an ELO system is a great idea, um, especially if you want to kind of measure past performances, uh, because it's really you earn points based on who you play, and if you win and you add some points almost in any game. So uh, you have the history there, but it gets actually quite stable um, after about 30 games or so. And that would be no problem for FIFA because we have a big database of games. So every team that's there, unless it's a new team, would have no problem getting in. Ah, yeah. That was the first uh, kind of thought they're going the right direction of course it wouldn't be FIFA if they wouldn't do it their way they're not using the actual uh, ELO rating which also yeah you want to do your own thing and so I looked into the formula and the formula is basically you have your new points are your old points before the game plus a multiplicative factor which basically gives, uh, reflects the importance of the game. And then it takes a difference of the result of the game, win, draw, loss, minus the expected result of the game, which is based on the points difference between two, uh, the two um, parties playing. This was uh, devised actually for the chess uh, rating, which they still use uh, by a Hungarian mathematician, Elo. So that's where the name is coming from. And uh, it is very popular. Many, many, many sports use something like it. And uh, interestingly, even the women's um, FIFA rating is, as far as I know, the ELO rating. Uh, I have to check. I know at one point it was. Uh, and I always wondered uh, why don't we use that for the men's game? Well, the men's game is more visible. We need to have our own thing. But yeah, so um, good thing that they're using something. What's the bad? The bad is uh, the first point that I immediately spotted. Uh, they don't use the goal difference in the game. The actual ELO rating that you can find online, www.eloratings.net, if you go there, um, you can see that this multipl multiplicative factor at some I call it factor, uh, is always adjusted by goal difference. So if you just win by one goal, there's no adjustment. If you win by two goals, it raises the factor by 50%. If you win by three goals, by three quarters, and then there's a formula that kind of tapers off towards uh, raising it 100%. So uh, if you lose by a lot, you're gonna lose a lot and vice versa. Of course it's now all multiplied by the difference between actual result and expected result. And of course if 
you're a high favorite, you actually need to win a lot to make a lot of points. And you uh, and a team that loses but doesn't lose by a lot will not lose as many points because of that arithmetic. So that is actually nice, but the FIFA rating doesn't do that. Uh, they just the multi the factor is only based on um, what type of game it is which is also in the original uh, ELO rating but there it's again this is adjusted by the goal difference so um, that was the first thing and yeah maybe it's all right um, at first but I really think and I'm thinking now uh, Germany Brazil 2014 Germany sh uh, should get a lot of points for beating up on Brazil. Brazil should lose a lot of points. Not just because there's a win and loss. And we get to a second point, uh, especially on that example, that just absolutely makes no sense to me. So yeah, goal difference is missing. Uh, the other thing is the weighting. Uh, and this also ties in now with the Nations League. We have that friend is outside of schedule, uh, count only for 0.5. I'm fine with that. Regular friendlies uh, get a weight of one, and then the Nations League uh, preliminary games, so the, the group games that we have this fall, only count for 1.5, while the Nations League final competition, as well as any qualifying group games, count for 2.5. Doesn't make any sense to me. I can see two ways why this happened, one positive and one negative. Let's go with the positive first. Uh, the positive is that they probably said, well, the Nations League is here to replace a friendly, so these are basically glorified friendlies. Uh, let's give them a little bit more. Uh, the negative is, well, UEFA has a great idea with this Nations League, a big money-making machine. We didn't come up with that. Bah, we are not going to give them any credit for that. I think it's somewhere along those lines. Um, I have, I don't know yet what to expect from Nations League, but I'm Nations League, but I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it really is a great idea, something that should be, should have been done much sooner. Uh, I hope teams are taking it seriously. Uh, and I think most of them will, because it gives you another qualifying spot and it will affect your uh, who you will be playing so you want to play good if you want to be promoted so yeah i think it's a good uh, a good idea that it gets weighted down so much i think it's a travesty of course the other positive is that at the same time many 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 uh, teams will play only friendlies that are not european and so yeah there would be a disadvantage but then i think um, if you're in South America, you're anywhere in advantage because you have this huge uh, qualifying tournament for the World Cup that gives you way more games than almost any other nation uh, for World Cup qualifying. So that's where the Nations League is coming from because they realize that, they are, uh, that the South American teams have way more competitive games than the European teams. So I think this is not a fair treatment. Also that the final tournament counts as much as a FIFA qualifier. I don't like. And then, yeah, uh, the rate, uh, it goes up then that uh, the continental tournaments, I think, uh, count only for four in the group stage and then five in the uh, knockout stages and five and six are also the weights for the World Cup. Something along these lines. Uh, I, I haven't looked now at the upper echelon. So yeah. That I didn't like. And then the last one, uh, the last thing I really didn't like uh, initially about their um, ratings is that in a knockout game you cannot lose points. I understand where they are coming from. Uh, that, you know, if you made it to the semi final, you, sh um, you should not fall behind a quarter finalists just because you lost in the semi final. But then again, the whole idea of the ELO rating is to punish you if you have a bad result. And if you lose in a semi-final but you lose uh, against an underdog, you're supposed to lose points. That's the whole point of it. 
and now take the Germany Brazil result. If you lose 7 1 in a semi final, you have to lose points. Sorry, Brazil would not have lost any points uh, for those last two games in the 2014 World Cup where they were destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And this has to be reflected in the rating. Uh, it is not reflected now because there is the goal difference missing in the game. And in addition, uh, you're not taking into account, you're not uh, deducting points. Now some uh, smaller things. I think the one thing is the setup for the rating. Of course they wanted that there's a seamless transition between the old and the new rating. So the old rating was just probably before the World Cup. Um, and so what they did is, and I really hate it, is that they took the points of Germany and then went second place team has to be 20 points below, third place team has to be 20 points below, fourth place team 20 points below. So basically uh, just using the ranking and not the rating. Now I saw that if you use the rating points the way the ELO rating is, there won't be any changes. So it's okay that they squish them a little bit more together. However, the way of doing it is stupid. Let the historical data run it out. You have all the games, Let start, give everyone, when once they enter, give them a certain amount of points, say a thousand, and then let it run. Uh, this is how the ELO rating is about, not some artificial construct that suddenly gives you um, a new rating because you want to have a seamless transition. If your old rating was good, it was not, then this should bear out any anyway, and who cares? I mean, I don't think there will be too much flip-flopping just because of the ball cup. Didn't like that one at all, at all. I hate it, this fact. Uh, I think it's much. It would have been, it would have been much more sense to uh, use historical data for that. Um, yeah, and you couldn't even uh, say, well, let's forget about the old rating. We have here it is documented, but in the new rating, this would be the difference. So that I don't understand. And then the last thing, but that's a point that I think this rating is not made for. But when you compute the expectations, you take your actual rating. But what if you are not playing with the full squad, for instance? Then your win expectation is not factored in. Also, I think it doesn't factor in home in the way. Uh, the actual year rating raises each opponent by 100 points, a certain amount, uh, because at home you play stronger. That should also be factored in. There's no question about that. Um, but yeah, also I think if you want to compute this, you need to have at least are they playing with the first string squad uh, or not. I know this is hard to quantify, but um, I think you can do this. Maybe they say if we take for key friendly, it's not that much of a weight. It doesn't matter that much. Yeah, I still think it's not the right thing. Um, if a major player is missing, you should be, you should be, uh, your points expectation should not be as high. Well, those are my thoughts on the new FIFA rating. I think it's a right step in the right direction. The way they are reviewing these things, uh, we might get a, finally a good rating in about 20 to 40 years, I think. But yeah, it's a step in the right direction, but the execution again is lacking. and. That's a little bit calling, I have to honestly say. Well, let me know what do you think about the new FIFA ranking rating. If you have any thoughts about it, uh, this is my thought as a statistician. Uh, having a little bit dealt with that, not an expert, but you know, I'm interested in, so I'm following those things. Um, let me know what you think. If you liked that video, give me a thumbs up. I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.